number and format it? Nope, you don't use number in this particular case. You don't use the number property before. That's, you leave that alone when you choose this percent. Instead, this is what you do. Come back to design and then click on one of the labels, any one of the labels again. Right click on the label and click on series label properties. Now for pound percent, what you want to do is change it to zero right over here. There we go. So that's zero right over there now. And whoops, let me put a P over there. So P zero, which means, which means zero decimal places. Whoop, get that. And my little eyes need to get better sometimes. So there's P zero over there. And then let's hit OK. This is very important to get this down because it's a common question that I'll see when I get on sites and on forums. Like, how do I do this? How do I eliminate these two decimal places and still get an accurate real percentage? Not just something that's just removed two decimal places. You go into number, you set it into one of the P's, and then you use the little brackets like P0, P1, P2 if you want one decimal place, or P2 if you want two decimal places, you name it. Okay, excellent. Now we've got that very helpful, handy tip for sure that gets there. Now, there's another thing that we have a problem with too. Let me show you. We click Run. Notice over here that we have all these slices, but sometimes you can have a bunch of slices that are interference. In other words, all you really are concerned with are the major slices, right? So what you could do is you could do what's called a threshold type thing. And, and, and let me tell you what a threshold does. A threshold is where you say, okay, you know what? I'm going to give some cutoff number. So like say 5%, like in this case. And if any of these slices are below 5%, I want them all combined into just one slice. That then allows me to focus on the big slices or whatever else. So you can see like, for example, oh, you know what? Here, for example, with this 22% right over here, you can actually see that for this 22% over here, independent filmmaker camcorders is, um, um, is actually contributing to 22% of sales. And you see the advantage of this is that prevents you from getting too cluttered on your actual pie chart so that you can focus on the big ones a lot easier. Remember, the name of the game is, is to use the least amount of space possible to give the most amount of information. So that's what you're doing over here. All right, so let me show you how to do that. Okay, we're going to come back and click on design again. Now, once we're on design, the instructions say to click on show hide properties. I already have this up from previous, um, previous lectures and previous tutorials, but this is the properties window, right? And that's how you display it. It's already displaying. That's why I didn't have to do anything. Now, what you want to actually do on this particular properties window um, is you want to click on any slice in the pie chart. So we click on any slice of the pie chart over here. And what that does is that brings it down into actually saying, okay, we're going to do the properties now for the pie chart. All right, now what we're going to try to tell it is that pie chart, I don't want you to do um, anything below 5%. I want you to combine into just one slice. So if you've got, for example, three slices right now that are below 5, combine those into one slice for me instead. So we click on this first, then we come down to properties, and inside of properties, we go down into the general section. So we're going to go down into the general section after we finish that. So remember, we clicked over here on the chart. We came back down inside the pie chart, right? Then once we clicked inside of the pie chart, which, was, which is sales over here, we come down to the general section right over here, and then we click the little down arrow right over there. So you guys can all see that right over here. So there's our little down arrow right over there. And then what we're going to see, let me just bring this down. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Right there. There we go. Okay. And then what we're going to see over here is something called collected threshold right over here. So you guys can all see collected threshold, and it's set to five, which means that, which means that okay, you know what? We're looking at at least 5%, and if it's not 5%, um, if it's not at least above 5%, it's not going to show. Now, we're going to come over here to none. And on none, what we're going to do is we're going to change none over here. And we're going to make it single slice. So we're going to change that to single slice. And what that says over here is, okay, you know what? Anything that doesn't hit the threshold, and um, every single one of those slices that doesn't hit the threshold is going to be combined into one single slice. All right. Now, the final thing we're going to do is coll underneath collected threshold, you guys will all see there's an option called collected threshold use percent. We're going to make sure that's true. So that way we, we maintain our percentages also. So 2% gets added to 3% to whatever. To, to, to whatever. All right, now let me click run over here. So come back right over there. So we're, we're all done with that part. Let me click on home. And then let me click on run. And look what happened over here. We actually had a combination. All those 2% are now missing, right? They all got combined. You guys see this 8% over here, and you guys see this 6% over here. Let me show you what occurred so you guys can see it real quick. Come back just so you guys can see this behavior. Then I'm going to click back on here just for a moment. And what I'm going to do is go back into general, and I'm going to turn it off. So come back. Whoops. There we go. Sometimes you have to be so careful with your clicks nowadays. There we go. 
and collect it style over here and I'm gonna say none which means turn off the collected behavior right there now I'm gonna click back on run and you guys can all see there's two percent there's two percent and there's three percent right over there all those are below our five percent threshold so these three need to be combined into seven percent essentially two four three percent seven percent over here so now to make my to make my chart less cluttered and to actually you know not look at the really small things that I shouldn't be paying attention to that might be just that might just be small values that don't need to really be seen anyway for analysis or at least or at least not paid attention to as carefully I click design come back and then I already set the general before so I'm just gonna click back on my chart there we go on my pie chart that is so I click back on the pie chart underneath custom attributes come down over here collect it style right over here I'm gonna come back and set it to single slice and then remember that and then remember that's um, remember that two two and the whatever else let's take a look there we go and you guys can actually see that what's happened over here is we combine everything into just one slice so sorry about that right over here is where we combine it over there and there's other so now we have far, we have less categories right inside of our legend that we look at because all these other ones just got combined into one very very helpful to be able to see you know to be able to see percentages and to be able to see proportions which is what a, which is what a pie chart should definitely do okay guys now that we've actually got that done just another thing over here and then we'll just do some cleanup and we're done all right sometimes what ends up happening over here is you may not like this edge like you guys see how this edge sort of comes out at us in, a, in this sort of way almost this concave type fashion or whatever you want to call it where it goes inside or you name it sometimes you want it to be different you want it to appear like maybe with a soft edge or something like that so let me show you what I mean by that just so you can see it okay um, what I want to do over here is again click on the pie chart so there's the pie chart right over there just like that yet again okay so there we're on the pie chart yet again okay now once I actually once I actually click on the pie chart as you guys can as you guys can see over here what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna find the custom attributes node under general and there's custom attributes yet again custom attributes is pretty cool as you guys can see now for the pie drawing style and watch this very very closely I'm gonna take the concave and change it instead of having it come in this concave fashion where it's all pointing in or whatever else I'm gonna click the down arrow and instead of that I'm gonna make it a soft edge and you guys see there's expressions where you can alter that too we'll talk about expressions later and look at that see how it's got a softer edge rather than coming in with that concave it comes out a lot more with this soft edge over here and gives you this appearance almost of a 3d coming out at you let me just click the little um, concave again so you can see it there's concave and look how it just goes in you see how it's coming in almost like a crater and then come over here and there's soft edge which makes it which makes it almost look like it's coming out at you to me um, you can see the soft edge over here where it's got where it's got the little where it's got the little shadowing to be able to highlight that end edge so it's making it almost look like it's convex in many ways coming out okay now I'm gonna now once I'm done with that I'm gonna click run just so you guys can all see it and look at that now I have a soft edge report right over there so one last thing to do and we are all finished with this particular lecture um, that is add a report and then deploy it to SharePoint so I'm gonna click design now I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna add a title to this report so you all see over here where it says where we've actually got the title coming up and there are two different places where we've got it. let me just bring this up we've got click to add title over here and then we've actually got our chat chart title so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna click on click to add title our text box and we saw this in the very first lecture by the way and then I'm gonna put camera and camcorder sales so I'm gonna give it a proper label right over there and then I press enter and I'm gonna type in as a percentage of total sales right over there so you guys can see over there camera and camcorder sales as a percentage of total sales okay now what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna select camera and camcorder sales first and then I'm gonna click bold so just make it bold and dark so that it appears you know bold and you guys have already seen the font section we've messed with it on previous tutorials if you haven't done them I highly recommend doing them if this is brand new to you um, you can you can alter properties here you can alter them over here or you can alter them by right clicking on the text box and going to text box properties so those are three ways you can do it pretty quickly all right now once we actually get that I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna change as a percentage of total sales to something smaller so that way it appears more as a 
more as a subtitle or subheader. There we go. So making it small, and I talked about that in the first one. Make the second one, make your second line usually very small whenever you title. It's a best practice. Now I'm going to click off of that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Run. See how it appears? There we go. And that looks pretty nice. So there's camcorder over there as a percentage of total sales right over there. And probably the only other thing I could do that um, I don't see included over here is change the name of this to Sales Pie Chart. That might have been a, skip I, a step I skipped. So I'll click Design. Just click on this right in here. And I'll just change it. There we go, right over there. Now it's all finished. Now I will go ahead and run it. Looks good, looks good. Very good, looks like what I wanted. And it's big so everyone can see it. I made it really a big this time and exaggerated it so that people could see it more clearly on the videos. Now I'm gonna click on design over here and last thing is save it to SharePoint. So there's save right over there. It's gonna look for this part on SharePoint. There we go, there's the reports. There's my reports library. And I'm going to call this right over here, pie chart. Save it. Now, once that's all done saving, I'll come up here to find it inside of my report. Click on it. And there's pie chart right over there, so I'll click on it. And congratulations, we have a report. So look at this, we're getting pretty far. If you've been sticking with these tutorials and if you're doing the labs, I have no doubt in my mind that you are gonna know this stuff very, very well. Um, here we go over here now, we're done with pie charts. So we've got bar chart coming, spark line, and pay attention to the things I'm gonna be telling you because I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about some key things that were not mentioned. Um, I've seen the spark line tutorial done before and I, think, and I think some of the cases where it's been done are excellent. I just wanna add some things to it from an instructor point of view. But as you begin to come through with all of this, yeah, you would have gotten the fundamentals. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Yet another one from Brandon, who is dying studying for certifications right now. Um, but it has definitely been a big pleasure. Thank you. Have a good day.